I have so much stuff to share. I better get started. I can't even write a script. I just have some bare notes. Um, it's been a busy month for Universal Blue and all the associated stuff that we're doing. And I thought I'd give everyone a quick update. So let's get started. This is the update, I guess, for, I don't know, the summer. It's, it's mid-August now. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about are things in the config repo. Uh, this repo is where we keep um, the service units, the update files. And over the past few uh, weeks, people have noticed we've started to hit some edge cases with the updates. Like, for example, if, if your system... Uh, goes into suspend and open sometimes the service unit might not fire off and this was causing some issues with both system updates and with Flatpak updates uh, however thanks to the folks who filed these uh, issues the community is on it and we we pretty much have a handle on um on them and you should see those updates over the next few days as people fix them up so that's as you can see here in the log it gives us a nice um uh, log of, of what's happening there. So uh, if you're not familiar with the universal blue, the, the idea there is for updates to be automatic and kind of transparent to you. And then you just always have your stuff. And that's, that's really great. Uh, got the newest kernel now from Fedora, which is 649-200. That's the correct one. So that's some good eating. I'm going to, so someone on Reddit complained that we don't have any documentation around just um, or, or around the project in general. So I've been hitting, I've been hitting the docs pretty hard. Uh, the first part of universal blue that I would like to talk about is called just, this is actually a piece of software that we don't use or that we don't write. Um, and it is a task launcher. Um, so if you look inside of just file and we'll look at, at some examples here in a minute, it's basically a way for us to have shared community aliases. So the way I was introduced to Just uh, was I, I was at, a, at a, my previous employer and we used a bunch of stuff. We used Python, we might use Node, we might use a bunch of stuff. And if you're checking out a project, right, you have to remember, oh, I'm in a Python project. You know, how do I build this? I got to serve, you know, run the web server or whatever. And you're going through the, read me to trying to figure it out and then you task switch to another project and you got to remember how to do it in node and how to do it in Ruby and all this kind of stuff. So the way we had it set up at work is we just use common just aliases to say, just build. And then if you're in the Python project, it would do the Python things. Just serve would just start serving the project locally to yourself. So we kind of had the idea that will be a great way to have shared community aliases, because one of the things that I don't like is when you have to make a distribution specific tool to do stuff. Uh, so I didn't want to do like you blue OS dash update, you blue OS dash blah, because then you have to design stuff and it was just not, it wasn't appealing to me. Whereas just this kind of a framework for doing all of these things that lets us kind of crowdsource stuff. So on a universal blue system, if you type just update, it does an RPM OS tree update. It will update all your distro boxes and it will also uh, update all your flat packs. So if, if you miss uh, that interactivity of updating all your stuff at once, uh, you could do that on my dual boot system. Now we don't support dual boot on the same disc, but um, what we do, obviously you can, uh, go into your BIOS or whatever and boot onto a Windows or another Linux distro. And I always forgot the system D dash dash firmware setup or whatever it was. So I just changed that to just BIOS and we aliased it. So this is very interesting and useful for yourself, but it comes really, really much more powerful when you use it together as a community and figure out how to do best practices and do stuff. So over the next course of the video, I'm going to show you some places where we're doing just uh, shortcuts that makes your life easier, but also lets us ship a bunch of really interesting things that you'd have to set up by hand. And a lot of these things are being set up by people who are using them every day. And that's the kind of reusability that kind of, you know, share cloud native configs that I'm trying to bring to that we are trying to bring to the desktop. Um, so uh, check it out. If you just go to universal uh, blue.org, here's a tip. The entire website has full text search. So you can just click search. Oh, let's 
it's kind of a expanded view. This is what it's supposed to look like here. And then you just type just, and then you should see uh, what's going to happen there. So related to that, as we were working on just a few folks on the discord, were like, you know, it really looks like seven people just grabbed all the shortcuts and shoved it in there. And that's exactly what it was, right? Like we were adding them ad hoc. Um, so we figured now is the time to kind of think about naming conventions, uh, usage, how we're going to organize them. And so there's this thread in the forums. If you want to check it out, I will leave a link in the video there below on what we want to do to enable people to just learn how to use just so is a very useful tool It's very small. You can read the man page in one sitting in less than a few minutes. And we're hoping to uh, show off a bunch of stuff that we are doing with just so let me give you a few things here. I hate computers because I had it all set up to browse everything. And then I totally, I totally, um, um, Mess that up. Uh, so here it is. Just BIOS will do a system cuddle reboot firmware setup. This one I like, Just Clean, will do a Podman system prune A, and that will get rid of any old uh, container images and stuff that you have running around. You probably want to run that on the regular. Remove unused flat packs and do an RPM OS tree cleanup. Just Change Logs I find very, very interesting because it'll give you the change logs of um, the image that you're booted on. Uh, versus the prior one so if you want to see like if you don't have if you're haven't rebooted you just just change logs over the course of the week and then you can just see what what the good stuff is coming the distro box shortcuts are really nice so you just just distro box arch and you'll get arch right interestingly we added this this month this is really exciting for me we added shortcuts for bazite arch so what bazite arch is is um a container that has Bazite, which is our gaming uh, focused image uh, and allows you to just create that distro box basically on any distro. What's really great about this is that it comes with Steam. It has all the goodies in there. So you can kind of transplant the Bazite gaming experience onto any system. This sounds ridiculous, but it works great. Um, you should just try it. I, I, I don't really have anything to say other than you should try it. Um, and then I have, you know, we have the usual suspects, create a Debian container, uh, all of all of that kind of stuff. There's that update I was talking about. So a bunch of these are landing and that that's making me, uh, that's making me really happy. Another thing that you're going to see is, uh, now where'd I put that tab? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, the framework images of Bluefin, which is my custom image, are now available in the boot menu from the ISO. So... If you have a framework laptop and you want to just install right from that menu, uh, we went and had and added that there. We still do not have an offline ISO. The ISO installation experience continues to be the worst part of the project. Um, uh, but we're making pretty good progress on an offline installer and doing that kind of research. And we hope, we hope that um, we can get that sorted. Uh, things are going pretty well. Uh, Fedora 39 branched two or three days ago. And we still have about another month, I think, of feature development upstream. Uh, so we're we're like we're liking where we're sitting right now. Uh, so there's that. If you have a framework, I took my first work trip with the framework, uh, with my image, and oh, what an amazing Linux experience, man! I can't uh, I can't uh, say enough good things about that that thing. So what a great combo, and I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to dog food that thing. Uh, what I have next here. All right, so let's get the good. This is some stuff that's going to excite some of you. Um, so Bazite is one of the very first custom images uh, of Universal Blue. This was done by Kyle Gospo. And lately, a bunch of people started to show up and get involved. And uh, that's that's led to a lot of improvements in Bazite. And they're going to be shooting for a 1.0 here, hopefully sometime soon. Uh, but what this is, is this is uh, Fedora, uh, a gaming spin of Fedora built on the Universal Blue Toolkit. So it starts from our main um, repos. Of course, it comes with the NVIDIA drivers pre-installed, so you're good to go. All the hardware acceleration is there. Uh, the, 
all the controllers work, of course, because we add those. And then they went really hog. Like they went, they went full gamer here. So, uh, all the scheduler stuff, stuff from Linux TKG, Google's BBR TCP congestion protocol by default, just in case you wanted that. And, uh, this is something interesting as well as they noticed, um, some, clues in the upstream steam os repo that uh they might be shipping with nix uh, obviously we've had that for a while so uh we figured hey let's just add it in there and uh they've added wadroid as well all nice and uh set up for you a lot of this stuff is still in development but it's working pretty well and it is physically running on the steam deck as well um i'm not doing that on mine because that's my kid's steam deck basically now and but there are people that are using it and it's 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 getting there. It's, it's, it's pretty dope. I think once we get the ISO, uh, sorted out, really the only issue there is we're still waiting for co container, uh, diffs, uh, to land in upstream, uh, Fedora, hopefully someday. Uh, so unfortunately, like all of the universal blue images, um, you are downloading a lot more than you should be. And then someday that'll be a nice, uh, container diff. And then that problem will be solved forever. Uh, but you know, just letting you know where we stand um today and they come with all the good stuff and i really wanted to get to the pictures um for 64 gig uh steam decks they do like dupe removes so all that all that wine stuff that's like the same thing all over your disc it kind of takes care of that for you and there's just too much to go over here they even added a gnome one so if you have a steam deck but you like gnome i like gnome on my tune one i like that touch uh, on there and that's that's pretty good and similar to bluefin course you get vr enabled by default because that's that's uh really nice um here's what it looks like and then they went ahead and added a bunch of like throwback um steam themes and stuff it's like uh really really cool i mean look at this thing i don't i don't know what's going on there but um that's it looks a lot like my computer looked like when half-life 2 came out and uh, of course they tell you everything that's happening here and um as always with Bassite, way more than I do. Um, Kyle does package all this stuff in his coppers. And of course you can use that and consume it at your leisure. And then at the bottom here, there's a special thanks from folks here. Um, I've been really impressed by the way Chimera OS, which is a project I've been very fond of and have been running for years. So to see Universal Blue, Chimera OS, all of these people, I didn't know that there was a Nix OS thing that's basically this but built on nix os and just a whole bunch of stuff so they're including techie and all that kind of thing it's uh it's really interesting and i think it will be popular once we get that thing going and of course one of the things i like is the ability to grab that by arch container automatically and have that gaming experience so i'm really looking forward to trying that out uh on my i use steam's flat pack um so i'm kind of set already but i'm interested in seeing uh, of course all of my options that are available to me uh so let's see what's next all right uh now we are going to look at bluefin which is this is my personal image yes i play destiny yes i understand i can't play destiny in linux i know cruel cruel universe all of this work can't even play my favorite game I went ahead and moved uh, the Bluefin documentation uh, in, in, into the docs website there instead of readme just started to get way too long. If you're not familiar with Bluefin, that is my personal image. It started off as, you know, make it like Ubuntu, make it behave like Ubuntu, but it's in Fedora. But over the course of the past few months, it's really kind of taken on its life of its own. And I'm really excited to share uh, what we're doing there. The main thing you, you should probably remember if you're into this stuff is, uh, Bluefin has three, uh, target users. The first one is the Chromebook replacement. So I've always thought it interesting that no one's really tried to make a Linux Chromebook, like a Chromebook like experience, um, using, you know, a, a more kind of traditional Linux OS that has, uh, you know, the power I, I love my Chromebooks, but sometimes you, you want Gnome or you want KDE or whatever. You want the real, the real powerful experience. Unfortunately, due to the 
uh, lack of having image base updates in a consumable manner, doing this wasn't, wasn't really feasible. So what I've decided to do is Bluefin is just going to be the Chromebook competitor, uh, using a few tools. The first is going to be cockpit, which is a fantastic project. And, uh, Martin Pitt and a few other people work on this. I've, I've worked with Martin in the past. I'm really excited. Uh, and I kind of get to consume his software again. This is a web-based UI. It runs on everything, actually. Um, so you can run on Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Fedora, whatever. And I'm including this by default in the developer edition uh, to kind of... We're going to try to tackle fleet management here. Like, if you look at Cockpit, it is a system management tool. Um, and you can, like have multiple systems in the same web UI. There's like a little web terminal. You can, you know, SSH into stuff. You can see all, all, all of this good stuff that you would need when managing your systems. Even, even if you're not using any of the stuff from Universal Blue, just throw a cockpit on a server and you'll, you'll be a happy person. Um, and you could do all sorts of stuff in here. More importantly, it has a plug-in system. So what I'm hoping we get to around doing is having... Uh, be able to just have like a Bluefin client and, and roll it into a thing. Bluefin does have support for Active Directory and all that stuff. All the packages are on disk uh, to do that. Uh, we just need to tie it, it all together. So currently we're shipping Cockpit. Uh, it's kind of unconfigured. And what I'm hoping is, is as more people start to use it, we spend more time on that and give people that management experience that they want. Because wouldn't it be neat if you're home, your home server, or whatever, just running cockpit and all your clients are there and it's nice and centralized. And I think we can do a lot of work there with all these sysadmin cloud native folks around uh, to give people a nice out of the box experience. I want to manage all my own stuff. That's just um, how it is. So like that, uh, that makes me really happy. Um, so that is Bluefin. Uh, but the changes that I've made, sorry, here we go, is... We, uh, a lot of updates this month, but we've been focused really on the Bluefin DX, which I, is the Bluefin developer experience image, which is a separate image that builds from Bluefin. And then we just add a bunch of stuff on top. Bluefin is basically finished, right? We're able to get the desktop uh, to look how we want. It kind of looks like, you know, there's a dock on the bottom and app indicators. That's what most people look like. Fine, whatever. Um, but DX is the one that I dog food every day and Brian Kettleson and some of the other ones, some of the other folks that are um, helping me uh, work on Bluefin. This is the image that we use. This is my work image. This is what I have on my framework, uh, which is actually Bluefin-DX-Framework. And um, we've made a lot of progress here, ma ma mainly in documentation. Uh, this guy, Bob, showed up today. I, I went to my kid's soccer game. And my phone goes off and I see there's a pull request and I've wanted to do this for a long time is just a shortcut to be able to switch between the developer experience and the normal desktop experience. So, uh, however, you can't just switch back and forth. You have to take an account. Are you on an NVIDIA image or not? Are you on a framework image or not? Um, so he was able to do all the logic there and then we just put it in a little shortcut, you know, um, uh, people on the Discord think this should just be a GNOME extension. I agree. Uh, so what this does is basically move you from normal Bluefin to DX and then back and forth. So imagine, you know, if, if you have your laptop and um, uh, you kind of just want it to be a client to give to a friend that's no maintenance at some point, uh, you would give them a Bluefin image. But like if you wanted to do a bunch of work and do get more Unix stuff, all the stuff that as a, maybe an experienced Linux user you want. I think you're going to want to be on the developer experience edition. So this comes with some features. We put visual studio code on the image. That's a, that's a, um, uh, that's a choice. And unfortunately the, uh, visual studio code flat pack experience, uh, with distro boxes and things like that aren't, aren't really ideal right now. Um, so we just decided to put it on the image. You've already, you already, are kind of opting in into a DX experience. Uh, so we figured we, we would avoid a bunch of complexity and we can always change it later. Uh, so for now, VS Studio Code is in the image. And if you don't use VS Code, uh, that's a bummer. So we're going to have to try to figure that out or make it easier for people to template out stuff. 
However, uh, people also use JetBrains, and Alex showed me this great tool that they make called Toolbox. Not to be confused with Container Toolbox. This is a very interesting application because it's like 30 megs or something like that. And then you run it and it installs and manages and upgrades everything that JetBrains offers, but does it all in your home directory, including all of the dependence, like all of your developer stuff and all that. They just kind of make it a easy. Um, and I, I, I feel like that is a better user experience for people than trying to find like the flat pack runtime to put underneath. And generally speaking, the IDE experience, um, isn't very good on Linux unless you give them, you know, all sorts of rights. So that's kind of what we're doing there. I want to, I, um, I don't use, you know, I'm not a developer and, and I don't, I'm not very familiar with JetBrains, but I was able to install stuff and it'll do upgrades and things like that. So I think it's a very good bang for the buck there. And, um, remember that we, we, we're not too picky about dogma, right? Like no distro would ever do this, right? But we don't care. Uh, as long as you get your jet brains, um, we are good to go. DevPod is another tool that we include. This is a very interesting one because there's lots of tools out there um, in this space. And I really like this one. This is from the uh, Loft SH folks. Shout out to, uh, uh, to Rich Burroughs out there. And Luca, who writes... DistroBox actually works on this. So I couldn't wait to put this on here. Uh, what this is, is it's uh, a tool that just lets you connect to all of these clouds and using uh, dev containers and just kind of give you that um, GitHub code spaces style thing with whatever you want, right? So like if you want to do it natively on AWS and you just it's just a nice shin that connects uh, your Visual Studio code to all of these things. And uh, we have that out of the box. It's part of the build process. You always get the fresh, uh, we build it every day. So as soon as they release, you're gonna have that uh, as soon as it's out. Awesome, awesome software. And of course, all open source. DevBox is a different one. I found this one very interesting because um, it uses Nix in the back end, but really, really does, I feel, a great job UX-wise from uh, for hiding that complexity uh, from you. Uh, we tried this before with a project called Fleek, and then over time, Brian realized that we could just make that a plugin uh, to DevBox. So that is a great combo if you're into Nix, and of course, you could just use Nix um, raw if, if you like. Very, very interesting project. They have their own Discord. They have their own community. Really, really great stuff. And if you're into Nix and, um, you know, kind of wish there was that other abstraction of ease of use on top of that, that is a great option. And that, that's, what, that's why I keep it in there. And of course, we'll give you the DistroBox experience. We have moved to a more declarative uh, model for, um, for DistroBoxes. Let me get back to the repo here. How am I doing on time? I don't want to be too long. Oh my goodness, 23 minutes. Look how much stuff. Look how amazing this community is already. So many people. So many people are helping us out and it is getting better every single day. I've been busy all day. Uh let's see. What what did I want to say? Oh, the distro distrobox declarative. I found this very interesting. So distrobox now has a feature that lets you just keep a file. Right, and then you just type distrobox assemble, and I put this in a just shortcut, of course, and then you can just kind of assemble your box ahead of time. What's really nice about this is if you have this file, additional packages, you can add all the stuff that you need there. So if I've noticed some people, they try to use distrobox and then they go, oh no, my container went away. I just lost a bunch of work, right? Well, if you think about the model all the way through, what should happen is that you should never have a pet to begin with. So that's why we're kind of adding this in here. So instead of you pseudo app getting stuff, which you can do, but once you decide you want to keep it, you keep it in this file here and you uncomment this. And then uh, what that does when you type DistroBox assemble regularly, it just reassembles the box for you with all the stuff that you want on it. So if you have your custom DistroBoxes, you can define as many as you want in here. And you can also 
export them now. So if you have an app uh, in a distro box that you need over and over and over again, um, you could just include it in additional packages, export it automatically, and then anytime you reassemble, you'll always have it. And since it assembles it on the spot, I'll always be up to date and you always get your stuff. Really great pattern. Uh, in here in the any file, we left some comments and stuff. Uh, there's your Fedora one. Let me just show you what that looks like. You can see here we're doing, we're exporting Chromium. Sorry about the font on that one. Um, and I got a Wolfie toolbox that I'm working on that I'm really excited about. All right, so that's DevPod. What else? I'm just going to read you through the stuff. Um, of course, all the Kubernetes and cloud native tooling and stuff is all included. So you'll get Helm and Kubectl and Kind. Kind create cluster and you can just have a cluster on your computer. It's really great. And then all the virtualization and container runtimes. This is one of the reasons that it had to be a separate image because Vert Manager and KVM and all that stuff, I really kind of just wanted that on the image and that, that separation... The reason you decide to make an image is when it's a separate use case, right? And at some point you just say, well, it has to be a separate image. And that's why, you know, we, we don't, we're not shy about including things on an image that we know is more useful there. So uh, vert manager and all that stuff. I include the podman dash Docker package. So when you paste stuff from the internet and tutorials, it works. Um, and of course, Lexi and LexD. And of course, uh, once the Incus project starts publishing, hopefully it'll get into Fedora, but once that's in there, if they have a third-party repo, repo, we'll of course uh, include that as well, because I'm looking forward to that. Machine learning, this is an excellent contribution here. You type just DistroBox MLBox, and what we do is we get you the latest stable PyTorch from NVIDIA. Now, if you look at what it takes to do this thing by hand, not only do you have to have the, uh, the drivers on your host, you know, but you, then you have to make a distro box and all that stuff. And it's kind of complicated. Someone did that for you. And the nice thing is it's using the upstream PyTorch image from NVIDIA. So they're maintaining it. All we're doing is kind of connecting you to it and calling it a day. Uh, so if you want to check that out, those instructions are there. It is a 20 gig container. <laughs> and uh, sitting there, I'm pulling it out. I was like, oh man, that's, that's a big one. But you know what? Like in, in, in the grand scheme of things for the people that are using machine learning resource wise, the time they are saving by not having to do this crap by hand uh, saves them way more than the cost of a disc. Uh, so this is really cool. I'm looking forward to just including all sorts of stuff in here. You should be able to just get workloads and just type a just command and just have it. And then we're going to hopefully give you like the best containers and have like a nice curated experience. Uh, that's why we've been saying, you know, it's kind of the desktop DevOps thing. Um, and as usual, some of the other stuff, sorry, I keep saying as usual because I've been using this thing for so long. I, I know some of you have no idea what this is. Uh, included cockpit as well. Included the HashiCorp repo and included, well, I guess I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, <laughs> a collection of well-curated monospace fonts. So we got the Adobe one on there. I, got, I made sure we got the new Intel one in there. Uh, of course, the Ubuntu font is included. Source Code Pro, uh, IBM's Plex Mono is one of my favorite fonts. So we didn't want to ship like every mono font in the world, but you know, I, I looked around at what fonts people really use and um, wanted to get a nice collection there for you. And those are just included out of the box on the image. You never have to care again. Uh, and of course, tail scale is included in every image so that you can always be on your land. I find this really awesome, uh, especially if you're doing um, like if your laptop, right? When I used to travel, I used to have a forwarded port on my network and all this kind of stuff so I could SSH in and get my stuff. Uh, now I just don't really care anymore. Everything is uh, included and there's even a just shortcut to install the little drop down thing so you can see all your little hosts on there and send files to them and stuff. Really great software. I love that. And then fish and ZSH, of course, because I know you're developers and you're really picky about things like this. So uh, if you type out just fish, we'll switch you to fish. You type just ZSH, uh, we'll ship you ZSH. And then, ooh, I'm missing one that we did add recently, if you haven't heard, is Linux nerds are about to freak out. Uh, where is it? Uh, homebrew. So someone sh uh, showed up and said, hey, can homebrew work 
on these systems. And we said, no, because the home directory is slash var slash home, you know, and homebrew was like kind of expecting of slash home slash George or whatever. Um, so then uh, they, they wouldn't take no for an answer. So they did a pull request upstream. It got merged and then released in the newest version of homebrew. So if you type just brew, we'll install homebrew. And then I think just brew dash shell will integrate it into your bash RC, your ZS HRC or whatever uh, for you. And then you can just brew install whatever you want. This is very interesting because uh, the DX, you know, a lot of my target audience are using Macs, right? Like open source is developed on, on OS 10. It is the way it is, right? That's why we're going on this rescue mission. Uh, so I had to have home, we had to have homebrew uh, for those kind of folks who, you know, needed homebrew. So I've been using it myself. It's, I find it very interesting, not, not being a Mac person myself, but I did enjoy that a lot of the packages are hosted on the same uh, container registry that Bluefin is, ghcr.io, which is GitHub's container registry. So the downloads are very fast and that makes me pretty happy. Uh, so yeah, homebrew is in there and I'm really proud of that. In fact, that's, those are the instructions I'm going to, uh, PR tonight left, left. I left some, um, um, best practices here around the day-to-day -day operation around system updates and stuff like that. And then, uh, some screenshots, which apparently haven't been merged yet, but, uh, planning on spending most of the next two months, uh, mostly doing documentation upgrades and throttle settings. You might've heard me say this in the past. So uh, we do have specific versions of Bluefin that you can be on. So right now you're probably on Bluefin colon 38. That's the Fedora 38 based one. And you can always set that as a number and that kind of locks you to that version, right? Additionally, we publish a latest tag, which is if you're on Bluefin colon latest, you'll be on Fedora 38 right now. And the day after Fedora 39 comes out, You'll be on Fedora 39 because you're on latest and that's what latest is that day. This was a pattern that was more common earlier in container days, but kind of considered an anti-pattern these days because colon latest, as you can see, will just upgrade you to whatever is set to latest. So that might be a major version upgrade. So if you think about server, you don't want your database to go from Postgres 8 to 9 or whatever it is. So that's why usually a specific versioned uh, tag is made and we discourage the use of colon latest. Uh, we just have it because I, I like to rev fast. However, by default, what we are going to do, I've said this in the past is, uh, for Bluefin kind of default to what I call GTS, which is an alias for Fedora minus one. So once 39 comes out, I'm I, my work machines are going to stay on that image on 39 for probably about a year, uh, cause they will be the GTS and then latest will go. So if you want the latest stuff, no matter what, latest GTS kind of hits that Ubuntu sweet spot for me, the kind of six month delay, you know, you're still getting a new, uh, you know, it's still supported by Fedora. You're getting a new version every six months. It's just a little slower cadence, or you can lock yourself into a version. That's the great thing about this model, right? Like doesn't matter. And of course I've said this in the past, as soon as Alma Linux or CentOS stream starts publishing, uh, OS tree images. I I do. I'm, I I want to make a colon LTS as well. And I call that the throttle. So that's what that is. Uh, and then some more information in there. Let's see what I have next. There's a dedicated page for the framework. If you have a framework laptop, uh, I, I started to document that a little bit. And this video is getting way too long. So let's see. I've got everything. Yeah. Check it out. Things things are going very well, and uh, we're pretty happy of this technological terror we've constructed. So check it out. Give us some feedback, and uh, tell a friend. Thanks.